All right, welcome to part three of the tool storage series. In this part, I'll be creating storage for the electric hand planer, so stay tuned. I inspect the planer to figure out design options and to also come up with a locking mechanism. The first thing I'm going to make is the base where the planer sits. So I took the measurements and I'm going to be using this plywood. The idea is to use this plywood to make the entire storage. So I set the measurement on the table saw and I made the cut. I measured, marked, and cut the plywood on the miter saw. I basically cut it so that it's long enough to accommodate the entire length of the planer. I'm going to be using this piece of wood as a side rail guide for the planer. But as is, it's too wide, so I'm going to rip it on the table saw. I set the measurement, I adjust the blade height on the table saw, and I made the cut. I copied the measurement from the bottom base plate onto the side rail and I made the cut on the miter saw. I applied some glue, then I attached the clamps and I wiped away the excess glue with a paper towel. Now it's time to fasten it with nails. The clamps are in the way, so I removed the clamps so that I could put in the remaining nails. I did a quick test fit to make sure the planer sits well. And now it's time for me to make the front stop blocker. I applied some glue, then I hold it into place with clamps, and then I secured it with nails. I'm going to be using this wide piece of wood to create the locking mechanism. So the idea is that the planer is supposed to slide in and the knob is supposed to go in between the slot and that's supposed to hold it into place. I test fit and I copy the measurement from the planer. And then I went ahead and I fine tuned the measurement with the square. And this is what it looks like. So again, the idea is to create a slot for the knob. So I'm going to first drill a hole using the drill press and the force a bit, and I'm going to complete it using the table saw. So this is what it looks like after I drill the hole on the drill press. And now I'm going to complete the cut using the table saw sled. So I clamp the workpiece onto the table saw sled and I carefully make the cuts. So I test fit the planer in the locking mechanism and I realized that I want the knob to be able to sit flush up against that semicircle. So I'm going to measure and trim it down on the miter saw. So 
So I got the piece trimmed off and I did another test fit. Now it's time to cut this piece down to its final length. So I took the measurements and I prepared to cut on the miter saw. I carefully made the cut on the miter saw and I did another test fit. I decided to round over the sharp edge, so I started out using the file and then I switched over to the orbit sander. I figured that I'd have a lot more control if I used the file, but it was just too slow. I use the file to remove the imperfection inside the slot. I decided to remove some of the material at the entrance at the slot. So I drew some guidelines and this is what it looks like. I'm going to use the orbit sander to carefully remove the material at a 45 degree angle. So this is what it looks like and now it's time to attach it to the frame. I applied some glue and I secured it with nails. I did a test fit to make sure it works the way it's supposed to and now it's time to remove the pencil marks with the orbit sander. I also hand sanded to round over the edges using a piece of sandpaper. Now it's time to make the supporting arms. So I copied the measurements from the base to the plywood and I made the cut on the miter saw. I first made a 45 degree cut and then I put the two materials together and I cut them both at the same time. This will help to make them identical. I applied some glue and I secured the first mountain bracket with some nails. Now it's time to install the second mountain bracket. So I applied some glue and this is where I ran into the problem. So the initial idea was for me to install the mountain brackets at the end, but in this particular design I was unable to do that because the locking mechanism on the opposite side was already at the end. So therefore I wouldn't be able to install the nails. So that's where the problem comes in. So I quickly made a design change and now I'm going to be installing the mountain bracket from the middle. I drew the guidelines on both sides and I carefully installed the nails. So the new idea was to figure out a way how to attach a mountain bracket from the opposite side without any obstructions. This is what it looks like so far. Now it's time to install the final piece, which is the back plate. 
So I copied the width measurement and I made the cut on the miter saw. I test to make sure it fits in between the mounting brackets and now it's time to make the final cut. So I copied the measurement then I made the cut on the miter saw. I applied some glue, then I used the clamp to hold it into place while I installed the nails. I installed the hook that's going to hold the wire from the planer, then I pre-drilled four holes on the back plate, and then I'll mount it on the wall with screws. So this is what it looks like mounted onto the wall. I retract the blade all the way in. So when I'm sliding the planer back and forth, the blade will not be touching the base where the planer sits. All right, guys, that's it for this one. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in part four.